Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Yadi and this is Yadi Angel Art. So today, I'm going to share some watercolor tips for beginners and we're gonna look at my process in creating this gift and I will finally reveal what it is. Let's get started. So if you guys saw my video last week, you'll know that I've been working on this project for several weeks now and I promised that this week I would reveal what exactly I've been making. So the person who this gift was meant for has not received the gift yet, but I promised to have this video out this week. So if you're watching this, I'm sorry. <laughs> the surprise is totally ruined. <laughs> I hope that you'll still like it when you get it in the mail. So for my first watercolor tip, I thought I'd talk about watercolor paper and what would work best. So if you've ever tried painting with watercolors on just normal paper, you'll notice that it warps really bad and the water kind of seeps through to the bottom and it just can't really handle too much paint or water. So I would suggest that the lowest weight of paper that you should look for should be about 140 pounds or 300 GSM. Usually this information is displayed right in the front of any sketchbook or paper that you're about to buy. My second tip is to always, always, always swatch before you start a major project. It's always a really good idea, especially for beginners, to test the colors that they've mixed on a separate paper and test to see if all of these colors look good together. It's also really important to consider that paint looks different on different paper. My next watercolor tip would be to paint by section. Basically, watercolor dries very quickly and when it dries, if you try to paint over it again, it looks darker in the, in the area you already painted on, so it doesn't blend together into one solid color. Now that could be a style that you're already aiming for, but if you weren't aiming for that, it does look a little strange and splotchy on the finished artwork. So what you'll want to do is just color little section by little section and try and blend all of that together before the water dries. Another watercolor tip that I would share with you would be to always keep an extra tissue handy for quickly fixing mistakes. One of the best parts of watercolor is that you can relatively fix a mistake by quickly putting a tissue over it and it'll like soak up the extra pigment. If watercolor dries, that's a lot harder for it to be picked back up again, so you'll want to keep that tissue handy. My final watercolor tip would be to consider trying out different tools to help you in the process. So if you feel like you've given watercolor a try and you enjoy it and you want to keep pursuing it and improve with it, I would suggest trying out these helpful tools. One thing I really like to use is washi tape. You can use that to tape down your paper. You've probably seen other artists use it or you've used it also, but if you haven't used washi tape before, it really helps keep the paper from warping and it also helps keep the paper still for you while you are painting. And I mean, let's be honest, who doesn't love pulling tape off of paper? It's like one of my favorite parts when I'm watching other YouTube artists. And one final tool I would recommend you check out would be masking fluid. I used both of these tools a few times in this video, but uh, masking fluid, it's basically a fluid that you use to protect a, like certain detail or part of your painting. So when I'm painting a large background, if I wanna keep a few dots in the painting white. I can use the masking fluid to block out these little pieces 
and once the whole paper is dry, I can rub off the masking fluid. If there's any other questions or things that you felt like you wanted to hear more about, let me know in the comments down below. So I thought I'd very quickly share with you guys why I picked this theme of Alice in Wonderland. Part of the reason was because the person that this is for really likes Alice in Wonderland, so I thought they would really enjoy this. Another part of me also felt though that for, for the end result that this will become, I felt like Alice in Wonderland had quite a few fun elements that I could build up and use as a really neat little scene. Now you may have noticed that I skipped ahead some of the painting processes for Alice and some of the smaller characters like the rabbit and the butterfly. Now part of that was because I had a lot of footage that I was working with and I didn't have a ton of time that I could share this with you, but the other part of it was because I completely ruined Alice again. <laughs> oh my goodness. And it, it always seems to happen right when I feel like I'm at the end of painting her, so it's really something. As you can see, and you'll, you'll see, I've zoomed up a few times in there to paint other parts, but as you can see, the second version of Alice has seen some things. <laughs> Oh, I, I tried to fix her, but oh, it, it was, it only made it worse. So, looks like third time's the charm for, for Alice in this project. Now, I did change things up with Alice in the end. I didn't use any black line art for Alice, or really, I tried to avoid any line art at all for her. And I kept her colors very pastel, very, very light, especially compared to the rest of the characters. Now part of that came from the fact that this is my third time painting Alice, and I was terrified of ruining this somehow. <laughs> oh, I... <laughs> But the other part, there was actually like some thought to this, the other part was I had spent this whole project wanting to do something different for Alice so that it was clear that she doesn't belong in this world, that she's a visitor and she's exploring this new land. But I just hadn't quite decided what to do. So this is what it turned out to be. Everyone else in the piece has very saturated colors they are more heavy with line art. Alice, I left very light colored and I specifically didn't paint any line art on her. I only used some pencil sketches. So now that you're seeing some of the major elements come together, I figure it would be a great time to reveal a little of what I'm making. So what I am making is an Alice in Wonderland themed card. The reason I'm making this card was because I was inspired by a different birthday card that I got for my birthday. And the scene was just really cool, and it was fun to look at, and I thought, that seems like a lot of fun to make. I was technically right. <laughs> it was a lot of fun to make, but this was also very stressful. It took about three weeks to make, and three different Alice's to put together. <laughs> but I did learn a lot, at least, and I feel like I'd probably make something like this again. It was really fun. 
So at the end of the video, I'll show you what was the card that brought all of this inspiration, and I'll also share with you a prototype that I made, as well as the final result. So, oh my gosh, <laughs> here is the final, final version of this card. I am so, so, so excited to have made this. It was very difficult to figure out, but it's so exciting to have this physical thing right here in front of me. So here you have the card that brought me inspiration. It's, it was a Hallmark card and it was so stinking cute. <laughs> and then next to it, you can see the prototype that I made about two or three weeks ago when I was starting this project. And finally on the left, <sighs> the finished piece. Thank you so, so much for staying up to this point with me. And if you guys haven't seen the first part of this video, you should totally check it out. You get to see kind of the the beginning steps to this project, as well as some light box tips. If you had fun with me today, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!